A very warm welcome to one and all present here. My name is Azaimin Mohammed from 10G and I'm here to deliver my TED talk on rather a profound topic, deepness of our minds. For most of us, the word depth refers to as a deepness of a body of water. A small percentage of people will think about the deepness of everything in the world and how it has many layers rather than the face which is easily visible to us. For example, let us take a pencil. We see it as a writing instrument, some of us using it for drawing, but a little more time given to this pencil brings thoughts like how about how there are artistic carvings done on the lead part and showcased as art. The pencil's history and many other dimensions of its complexity Similarly, each and everything has a deeper and a more profound meaning to it. This will become clearer with the story. There was once a bull who ploughed the field for his master with heavy pain and suffered constant abuse. He used to complain about his plight and had a brainwave to act sick in order to escape his work. The master, thinking the bull had outlived its use, sold it to a butcher which resulted in its death. The moral, which I am sure all of you remember, is that be happy with what you have and do not complain. But here, the animal is facing constant abuse and exploitation, so when we give it a second thought, the original moral is don't speak up for yourself, abuse is normal, etc. And upon even more research, a shocking revelation was that this story was read to slaves in the medieval times to keep them from revolting and questioning the way the system ran in terms of exploitation. Years of blind trust is shattered from just thinking a bit more deeply. Imagine what else we might have overlooked. Our mind is a powerful engine th that can be utilized into doing or influencing almost anything, but we lose aspects that can change our whole perspective by not thinking enough. Actions have consequences. Some people fail to recognize it and trust them to just work out before putting any effort into making sure it goes right. The way we perceive and understand what is before us is a vital key for our development both mentally and physically. We have all heard the saying, we can either view a glass as half full or half empty. It may seem trivial, but all seemingly insignificant points can develop into a very much significant occurrence. Most of us sitting here are in this 14 to 16 age range. In a few years, we will be hunting for colleges and after that heading off into our independent professional lives without anyone to depend upon. In the past, our grades had too much emphasis and determined the smartness and knowledge of people. Do not get me wrong, grades are important as they also determine whether you are hardworking and have capacity to learn new sets of skills as well as knowledge. But along with grades, we should also know how to interact with people and how to perceive things we see. Not every skill can be derived from textbooks. This is a ripe age for us to develop certain skill sets to achieve great heights in our chosen career paths. What we do during these years determine what we do for the rest of our lives. Suppose you want to be a doctor. Just knowing how to diagnose an ailment or which medicine to give is not the only thing you need to become a successful in that career field. Being able to ease a patient's mind and calming them down is also vital. A salesperson needs to know how to sell his products in a convincing way so that the customer feels motivated to purchase his product. Similarly, each profession has its own tailored skill set. It is up to us to find and develop it in order to proceed in life. Don't dwell on the past, focus on the future. While that saying is partly true, it is also wrong at the same time. Its base meaning says to quit whining about the past and develop on how we can make the future better. But how are we going to fix the future without recognizing and focusing on correcting the mistakes we made in the past? Both should have a balance of importance within our minds to achieve the desired outcome. With this, my speech is arrived to a conclusion. I landed off with a quote by Sir Arthur Cannon Doyle. We see, but we do not observe. A very relevant line in today's world. Now, do you really want to be known as a shallow-minded person? Or one who takes matters a little more deeply with an intricate mind? It is all up to you now. Thank you for lending me your ears and have a fruitful day.